Hey guys, I hope you all are doing fine. This is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry, where I make interesting explanations to dental topics in an effort to make dentistry fun and easy to understand. So I would really appreciate if you like this video, comment and also subscribe to my channel and turn on notification. So today we are discussing about provisional restorations or temporizations in FPT. And by the end of this video, you will know what is provisional restoration and why is it required? What are the ideal requirements of a provisional restoration? What are the types of provisional restorations and how are these made and what can be the limitations of a provisional restoration? So keep watching this video till the end and let's get started. So first let's go by the term itself, provisional. Provisional means it is established for a time being till permanent arrangements are being made. So it is also called as temporization, interim processes or provisional processes. It is given for a time being. So basically we, when we have to give an FPD to any tooth or teeth, we prepare that tooth, we make the impression and send it to the lab for the uh, fabrication of the FPD. And while the cast restoration is being fabricated, it is also important to keep the prepared tooth or teeth protected. And during this time between the preparation of the tooth and placement of the definitive restoration, the tooth is protected by a provisional restoration. So it will keep the teeth protected as at the same time it will also keep patient comfort. So now we understand that why we need to give a provisional restoration. So let's see what are the ideal requirements of a provisional restoration. So whenever we give any restoration, basically broadly three requirements are important. These are biological, mechanical and aesthetics. So broadly these three requirements are must for any provisional restoration also. So what are the requirements? So the first is pulpal protection because we have a freshly prepared teeth and obviously it will be more prone to sensitivity. Therefore, the restoration must be fabricated with a material that will prevent thermal conduction. Therefore, the sensitivity and the margins of the restoration should be well adapted to prevent any salivary leakage also and maintain periodontal health. The margins should also be non-impinging. Then good positional stability and occlusal compatibility is also important because uh, being able to function occlusally with the provisional restoration will aid in patient comfort and ward off any kind of tooth migration and prevent any joint or any neuromuscular imbalance. Because if a provisional restoration does not ensure positional stability, tooth movement can occur and additional treatment will be necessary. The next is strength and retention. The restoration must stand up to forces to which it is subjected without breaking and coming off. And the restoration should also remain intact during removal so that it can be reused if needed. And the last is aesthetics. In some cases, restoration must provide good aesthetics, particularly in anterior and premolar regions. Now let's see the types of provisional restoration. They can be classified based on the method of fabrication as the custom made and prefabricated provisional restorations. Now custom made, you can tell from the name, it is fabricated to reproduce the original contours of the tooth. And this can be done with several different kinds of resins by a variety of methods direct or indirect which we are gonna discuss in a bit. Prefabricated provisional restorations on the other hand are commercially available crowns and these are available in various sizes but they can only be used for a single tooth restorations. On the basis of types of material used they can be classified as resin based or metal based. Resin based materials can be cellulose acetate polycarbonate, polymethyl methacrylate, microfilled composite bis GMA, urethane dimethacrylate or direct composite provisional restorations like bis acryl composites. And metal based can be aluminium, nickel chromium and tin silver. Based upon the duration of use, they can be short term temporary which are used for up to 2 weeks Whereas sometimes provisional restorations need to be used for a longer duration of time then this is called as long term temporary in this we give it for 2 weeks to a few months. 
This may be due to lab delays or patient inavailability or deliberate reasons like uh, correction of TMJ disorders or periodontal diseases. Now based on the technique of fabrication, provisional restorations can be classified as those made with direct technique, indirect technique or direct indirect technique. The direct technique is done on the actual prepared teeth in the patient's mouth. The indirect technique is accomplished completely outside the mouth whereas in the direct indirect technique this is done by forming a temporary in indirect manner and then relining this directly in the patient's mouth. So now let's see in detail what are these techniques and which one is better. So first let's see how a provisional restoration is fabricated using a direct technique. Now first of all an over impression of the patient's mouth is made using additional silicon impression material. This is done prior to the tooth preparation and this over impression is then trimmed and is preserved. Then tooth preparation is done and separating medium is applied on the tooth and the adjacent teeth. Now the monomer and polymer of the resin material are mixed and are then loaded into the over impression that we already have and before polymerization takes place we immediately place this over impression inside the patient's mouth. So we reseat the over impression inside the patient's mouth with the resin material loaded in it. Now this resin material is allowed to polymerize intraorally for 10 minutes then the over impression is removed and the polymerized restoration now should be carefully teased out of the patient's mouth and the teeth. Then the voids are repaired and the restoration is trimmed, finished and polished and is finally cemented and is given to the patient as a provisional restoration. So that was how the provisional restoration is made using the direct technique. Now let's see provisional restoration using the indirect technique. So first of all an over impression is made in the patient's mouth. But suppose if there are certain defects like the cusp is broken and over impression is made from the diagnostic cast. After these defects are filled and smoothed over with red utility wax on the cast. Okay, so we make the over impression from the diagnostic cast. Then the edges of the gingival areas of the over impression are cut away with a BP blade or a knife. So this is all before the tooth preparation. Now after preparing the tooth an alginate impression is made and the quick set plaster is used to pour the alginate impression. So that we get the plaster cast immediately and the plaster cast of the prepared tooth is then trimmed neatly before processing the temporary restoration. And then the cast is tried in the over impression before proceeding any further. Then the separating medium is applied on the plaster cast. Then the acrylic resin is mixed and is placed into the over impression and the cast is seated firmly in the over impression making sure that the teeth on the cast are accurately aligned with the tooth impression and is held in the place with a rubber band. The resin is allowed to polymerize and the cast then can be broken down to remove the provisional restoration. Then acrylic burrs and discs are used to trim the excess resin from the provisional restorations and the resin extending beyond the finished lines must be removed. The occlusion of the restoration is checked and reduced if required. Finally the provisional restoration is cemented on the crown using zinc oxide eugenol cement mixed with petrolatum which is added to reduce the strength of the cement so that uh, easy retrieval of the provisional restoration can be done when the final FPD is supposed to be given. So now that you know both of these techniques you may ask which one is better. So the indirect technique is preferred over the direct technique because of its accuracy and since you now know that in the direct technique resin is allowed to polymerize directly on the freshly prepared tooth and we know that the polymerization is an exothermic reaction and this will increase the sensitivity and will cause pulpal irritation to the freshly prepared tooth. And you also saw that we have to tease out the polymerized resin from the tooth in the direct technique. So when the resin is polymerized it might get locked into the undercuts. So to avoid that a directly fabricated resin provisional restoration must be removed from the tooth before it has completely polymerized. So now that we have removed it when it is partially polymerized and the complete polymerization will take place outside the patient's mouth and also there is no support form for the provisional restoration. And because the pure methyl methacrylate monomer has a volumetric shrinkage of about 21%, so when it is polymerized outside the mouth without any support form, 
so the provisional restoration will tend to shrink and so the provisional restoration formed by the direct technique will be of improper fit because of the shrinkage that might have taken place so these are all the reasons why indirect technique is preferred over the direct technique so now let's see the limitations of a provisional restoration first of all there is lack of inherent strength and these provisional restorations tend to fracture especially in long span bridges and in patients with bruxism then there is poor marginal adaptation they have poor wear properties and because the resins are porous they absorb oral fluids and hence they have detectable odors then because of poor tissue response this may result in tissue irritation and then there is also poor color stability of the provisional restoration so this is all about provisional restoration or temporization i really hope you like this video and if you do please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and show your love and support and also please do subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts in the comment section down below and i'll see you in the next video bye bye thank you